Well, as you as you progress through this this journey that you're on, and you're winning these victories along the way, this idea kind of comes comes upon you, which is this drive to be uncommon amongst the uncommon. That's why I wanted to become a Navy SEAL. I wanted people to push me outside of my comfort zone every day. Buds breaks people down to the point where you don't want to be broken down again like that. To me, that was exactly the exact starting point for my journey in life. That was the starting point for me. For a lot of people, it's the finish line. And I didn't see it that way for me. So that's where I started becoming uncommon amongst uncommon people. I, I wanted more. I wanted more. Mediocrity is everywhere right now. And we're all trying to find an easy way out. And we're judging ourselves. Let's say there's 10 people in this room and we're all mediocre. But I'm the best of the mediocre people. I now think I'm great. I'm great. We surround ourselves around people that make us feel great. They tell us what we want to hear. The second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people, we don't like that feeling, that challenging feeling that of, of that person who's waking up at 3.30 in the morning and say, hey, push your shit on, we're going for a run. We don't like that challenge. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, man, I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. We'll take a day off, man, we'll get a pizza and shit, watch the game. We like that. We, we love that feeling. Why? Because you understand, man, we're good, bro. We don't want that motherfuckers like this. Hey, man, no, bro. Get your fucking shit on, man. Stop being a punk. We don't want that in our lives. We don't want that person who's constantly challenging our weaknesses. We want that person who's constantly, you know, making us feel nice and good and secure in ours. That's the mediocrity of life. We want to be the best amongst the average people. People wonder, how do you stay hungry all the time? Because after I accomplish something, I don't sit back like a lot of guys who graduate buds, graduate this, graduate that. They get comfortable. They wonder why I'm getting weak, man. I don't know, I lost my edge. What's going on? Because once you hit the top of the fucking mountain, guess what happened? You're, I'm good. I'm good. So you wonder why you're falling down now. Because once you reach the top of the mountain, you got to build a fucking another one. That's mediocrity. There's a lot of people in mediocrity who have a nice resume, but they're one-timers, man. They hit, they hit a one-time deal, they busted it open, got a lot of money, but they're good. You're mediocre now, man. What are you fucking doing today, tomorrow, the next fucking day? That's why I don't listen to theorists. I don't listen to all that bullshit. I listen to a motherfucker who's like this, man. What's wrong, man? I'm fucking tired, dude. Why are you tired? Because tomorrow, I got to do the fucking shit again, man. Whatever the shit is that made me fucking nauseous and sick to my stomach, it made me hurt. There's no ending. And that's the person I listen to. That's the person who's gained knowledge. You gain knowledge through suffering. And on the other end of suffering is a world that very few, very few have ever seen. It's a beautiful world because that's where you find yourself. You don't find yourself in over here. You find yourself on the other end, like, like the 100 mile race I was on, I ran it for 24 hours. I found myself on the other end of that fucking race. That 19 hours, I found, wow, there's a whole nother fucking world out here that I've never even saw, but the world's in your mind. And that's what all that mediocrity is about. Mediocrity is contagious. So the other day I got an email from this lady. She says she truly enjoyed my book. But as she read it, she thought I was just crazy. So after she read it, she put the book down and started living her normal life. Just going back, paying bills, going back to work, complaining about shit. A few days later, she has time to think about the book and it scared her. She thought, well, maybe this guy isn't crazy. And that's what scared her the most. Maybe he's here trying to show us human potential. 
what we're all capable of doing. A lot of people like to put titles on other people who are doing extraordinary things. It makes them feel better about themselves. Gives them a get out of jail free card. I'm not crazy. I'm just not like you. Um, growing up, being the kid I was, I found strength in different movies. So I come home, in one movie I found a lot of strength, and as funny as it may seem, but I visualized this scene. I do it today during the pull-up record. I did 4,030 pull-up. The last time I did it, I actually got it. It took me three times. I played one song for 17 hours, pretty much. And it's from this movie, Rocky One, Round 14. I related to the person in the movie but just the one scene when Apollo's beating the shit out of Rocky. He falls in the corner and everybody, and Rocky, and, and Apollo turns around, arms up, happy as shit, I, just, I got this guy. He turns around not knowing that Rocky's trying to get up off the, off the canvas. Everybody's saying, you, you, you did good. You did good, you went 14 rounds with, with, with the champ. Rocky didn't hear shit. He got up and what sticks in my mind today, still, it, uh, and I'm seeing it right now, when he got up, Apollo starts to turn around to see the aftermath of what the fuck he just destroyed. And he did not expect to see what he saw. And what I see of the whole movie, I see Apollo Creed's face. And I said to myself as a young kid, I want to be that. I don't need to win. I don't need trophies. I don't need people to fucking like me. I just want what he has. A fictional character, whatever the hell it was, I want that. And I visualize that. And I want to become the guy who can get off the canvas and look at somebody who beat the fucking shit out of him. Life. I'm talking about life right now. mentality became what I wanted and that's how it started with that visualization of the canvas and all I gotta do is just keep getting up and the most important thing to learn is that we have so much to learn we all do you have to process the information you have to absorb it you have to accept it you have to open your mind you gotta free your mind so that you can learn and make real progress you get one shot one shot at this gig right here life one life that's all you've got let the fear of regret fuel you to take Take action today, now. To take action now to become 
a better person not filled with regret to build this strength in your mind do you think it had to be physical yes yeah i, I think it was for everybody um the 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 mental aspect everything in my life so i had to learn this ability that i talked about my physical gave me the self-discipline and that literally has carried me over to i can sit down and study what may take some people an hour to study i can i have to sit down for maybe 10 hours to learn the same fucking shit and that's very frustrating so i always talk about running and swimming and all the stuff i did in the military and pull-up records and power lifting and all these mental all these physical feats shit I do in my life is just learning but I got that self-discipline from waking up at three or four o'clock in the morning to go out in the cold weather to 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 you know get my run in to get my lift in to get my swim in to do those things it totally transfers over to my learning it's that self-discipline you gain from feeling good about yourself by overcoming yourself on the physical aspect of life. And it transfers to your whole work ethic and everything you do comes from the physical aspect of life. I truly believe that. And the physical and the mental are all one. They are all tied into one, man. <laughs>